Hi YouTube. Today we're going to take a look at the Autel AL629 uh, OBD2 scanner. Um, I haven't seen too much on the internet about this this uh, specific model. I have seen plenty on the AL619, which is available on Amazon still, and it has uh, pretty good reviews. The 629 has mediocre reviews, uh, but not many of them. So I was kind of curious. This should be just a minor upgrade to the 619, so it should perform in a similar fashion, but because there's not much information, I figured I'll try to do a video of this guy. Um, I needed him today for a 2004 Honda Accord that has an intermittent uh, ABS light and a airbag light. So I'm gonna see if this thing can pull the codes for me and hopefully save me a trip to the dealership. Normally I use this little guy, this is one of these, um, Bluetooth interface clones I bought off, I think, eBay for like 20 bucks or something. These work uh, with your phone or tablet and you uh, connect it to an application called like Torque. And uh, that's good for reading engine codes if you only have a check engine light. But because I'm ABS SRS, that thing doesn't do anything for me. So I need to step up to an actual tool. Uh, this is only, you know, 130 odd dollars, so it is nowhere near like the professional grade, like $8,000 things that will read everything all the time. This only, this will hopefully read the uh, my vehicles. I have the Honda Accord, which I mentioned, and a 2008 Scion XB, which is effectively a Toyota Camry. So um, I would hope this thing should be able to read two of the most popular. Uh, cars in uh, the US. Uh, so we're going to take this out of the box and check it out. Okay, so inside the box you get the unit itself, which has a pretty nice good feel to it. The buttons are actually very nice. The uh, silicone rubber feels like. Um, good clicks and all that. It doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it. doesn't need a lot of weight, but it has a nice big rubber baby bumper. Um, this connector then hooks up to this cable, which has your OBD2 connection on the other side. Good, good length of cable, so you don't have to be right next to it uh, on your knees and stuff like that. Um, and then on the bottom, a micro USB uh, cable, which a micro USB connection, which comes with the cable for hooking up to your computer, and then an eight gigabyte SanDisk uh, micro SD card for the software, and then a nice. Uh, carrying pouch with the manuals inside of it. So let's um, hook this up to this computer. Let's hook it up to a computer because we need to get this thing updated immediately. That's pretty much the uh, the big thing with all these. Got to get it updated to make sure that there's no issues connecting to uh, your computer, your cars. So let's try and get set up for that. So I'm back to my backup laptop, but uh, I downloaded the Autel Maxi PC update. Um, PC suite right from their website, uh, which came as 1.2.3, but um, as soon as I ran it, it uh, wants to install another update to 1.2.4, so what was on their own website was not their latest. Uh, I'm going to keep going through this, and then we'll try and see if we can get it connected. So I can hook the device up to my uh, laptop right with the USB port, and it does power up and show fun stuff, um, but the tool still can't find it. So it uh, also suggests that you can um, remove the SD card from the uh, scanner and plug it into my computer. So I have a micro SD adapter and uh, I'm going to plug it in. And it looks like it comes with a genuine SanDisk 8GB. Nothing fancy, but it should work. Now with it connected, it recognizes the SD card and uh, goes through the login stuff. So you do have to set up an account with Autel. Um, I do think they require some stuff, maybe a phone number if I remember right. Uh, so there's a couple things that you do have to answer for and uh, drop that in and connect it up and then you can begin the registration process. So that's fun. Uh, you have to make sure you go to the website first and register a device before you can actually use it in Maxi PC Suite. Um, I guess you can't do it itself. Uh, uh, okay, so maybe if I would have read the directions a bit more closely, but 
In order to do the project registration, you have to do the serial number and password, uh, which is actually found in the About menu of the Autel. So you have to pull the SD card back out, plug it back into the device, and power it up, and go to the About menu, and then you can actually get those numbers, the magic numbers that make everything work. Okay, success. Uh, I'm going to start pushing the updates into it. Uh, I guess there's not too many that can be updated right now, but we'll see what happens. And uh, once that main system update's installed, it gives you all the other options for all the other updates that are available for it. So um, looks like a decent number of updates on it. So I'm going to hit select all and push them all onto it just in case. Okay, all the updates done. Um, after all this, I might take this SD card back out and do a whole backup of it and just scroll it away um, just in case. But uh, for now, let's uh, pull the card back out, throw it into the scanner, and hook it up to the car. All right, we're nice and cozy in my wife's car. Uh, the 2004 Honda Accord Coupe uh, four-cylinder um, has a 183,000 miles on it, which for a uh, car in the salty north is uh, rather remarkable. Um, so anyways, uh, we have the intermittent airbag and ABS light. Um, it doesn't show us here, but hopefully uh, this guy will be able to pull out a stored code. Um, so let's just try and do a scan. We're in an Asian vehicle. We are in a Honda. Let's see if we get anything out of it. We are in USA. Start new session. Doop -de -doop -de -doop. Might take a while. Might not do anything. Sometimes the cars have to be off. Sometimes they actually have to have the engine running. Sometimes they won't work at all if the engine's running. So it's... Uh, please enter VIN. Shouldn't it be... Oh, come on. There's no... I'm not... Oh, uh, okay. Um, can you... No. That doesn't help. Oh... Input cannot be no. Hmm. Oh. Well, this is going to be fun. I'll figure this out later. Well, not exactly the funnest thing trying to put in the VIN number with that keyboard, but uh, it does work. Makes me think I maybe should have gone the step up to the, uh, the 808, which I think has the uh, automatic VIN reading, which is maybe why. But let's see. Okay. So this can read all the engine automatic transmission. So let's try the safety restraint system. The engine should not be running, but the ignition should be on, which is our condition. So let's set OK and see what happens. Please give me something. Something that can fix cheap. Something like a dirty connection or uh, any other number of things. Loading data. Ooh. Does that mean it's working? It's still initializing. Speed is not its uh, virtue, but that's okay. It's kind of cheap. Oh, stop. ooh, read codes. All right, it took that long, and I guess it didn't actually read anything. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, you are. Well, CAN bus is not exactly the fastest thing in the world. Ooh, ooh, okay. Open or short to ground in the passenger's airbag cutoff indicator. Oh, the light? The dash light? Open in the driver's seat belt buckle switch. Okay. 
driver seatbelt buckle switch. You know, that's a problem I actually tried to fix. Um, it's a common problem in these vehicles that the driver seatbelt buckle, um, there's a switch in it, so the safety system knows when you actually have your seatbelt connected. But uh, I kept having, I, I thought I could, I fixed it. So finding the driver's side is actually extremely difficult, but uh, I went and got the passenger one and ripped the switch out of the passenger side and put it in the driver's side. And, uh, but, hmm. Okay, I'm going to save those. But it makes me wonder, open or short ground in the passenger's airbag cutoff indicator. So, that thing, it's complaining that that is not working correctly. This is a little bit, I think, too picky of a system. I don't care if the damn light works, but maybe I have to fix that now. All right. All right, I'll save these for now. Maybe uh, the uh, switch thing I actually fixed, but now the indicator is angry. Okay, well, that's that's something to chase down. So we know they're there. Uh, I can investigate and then try and see if I can um, clear those later and see if they come back. So let's try ABS. Now the uh, the safety restraint light and the ABS light were coming on independently, so they were both intermittent and they didn't seem to be too correlated. So I'm hoping ABS is just something like a, a control unit will quit communication above 50 kilometers an hour. Oh, okay. Uh, read codes. Left front wheel speed sensor open or short. That I can fix pretty easy. Uh, so getting a wheel speed sensor and throwing them in the car, that's about no trouble at all. And that's exactly what I was trying to find. So I should be able to clear that code pretty easy. The, the airbag one, I'll take a look at. I'll probably, I, I know the passenger airbag light. I've seen it work. Um, huh. <laughs> All the damn things. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll try and fix that too. So let's uh, save the speed sensor. So uh, left front. Uh, that's that's not uh, any problem at all. That's actually probably the easiest one to to fix. I still have to pull the wheel off, but that's no trouble. Excellent. Okay, so this definitely saved me at least half of a dealership visit. Um, Excellent, excellent, excellent. But for shiggles, let's take a look and see what the automatic transmission can say. I'm really hoping nothing because uh, it's been running pretty good. Knock on plastic someplace. Plastic, not. Where can I knock? There's no wooden here. Knocked. Um, ooh, read codes. Oops. Ooh, no faults. Excellent. Excellent. And let's try the engine. Let's see what the... for the PGM be. Oh, I have to look that up later. Read codes. System pass. No faults detected. Could PGM be something like emissions? Okay. Okay. The details. Oh, there's my VIN. Cord. Okay. Huh. Uh, yes. Well, maybe I'll just try and do the standard. Oh, all right. I'll just try and do the OBD2. So this should just be doing the standard, uh, the standard engine reads. We'll see if we get anything out of it. Uh, there shouldn't be any engine codes. Hmm. 
Do, 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 do. Hold on. I just realized the heated seat is on. That's not going to be good for the battery. So, codes found zero. Monitors two. Monitors eight. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure. So I guess that means. Oh. Just uh, let's see. Stored codes. No codes. Pending codes. No pending codes. Okay. So pretty awesome. Let's for the hell of it try whoops live data. Listen to that four cylinder per. Uh let's see here. Live data. PIDs, mini PIDs, proportional interval differential, uh, complete list. Ooh. Twelve hundred RPM. That's uh, that's updating slow. Coming back down, yeah, do that little pickup as it's trying to warm up. But uh, cool. So it's uh, this is not the fastest way to read this stuff. You're gonna ooh, spark advance. Oh yeah. Huh. All right. Anyways, awesome. Okay, uh, it's working for this car and it's finding the problems I need. Um. I wonder if I can get back to those codes easily. Uh, where can I do that? Not playback, is it? Oh yeah, trouble codes. So Honda saved that. So it has three codes in here, so there must be the three ones I just found. Open a short ground on the passenger's airbag cutoff indicator. Open in the driver's seat belt buckle switch. Awesome. I mean, what is this saying? No, that's the same. Oh, because it must be the. That's weird. All right, this must be. Yeah, it's the left front wheel speed sensor. Okay, I'm not sure why it has three listed in here when actually these two are identical. They list uh, the same. But oh, okay, it gives me everything I need. Excellent, 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 excellent. So. I am going to write down those codes so I can uh, do a little bit more internet investigation, especially for that <sighs> indicator. That's interesting. And uh, I'll uh, get this car fixed up pretty quick. This is awesome. So this is, the again, the Altel Autolink AL629. Um, as you saw, it's a bit of a chore to get it updated. And it's not exactly fast when you're connected it to your vehicle, especially when you're trying to do things like manually enter your VIN number on a directional pad. A good time. But uh, otherwise, for the price, it seems to be doing the business, at least in this year, this model vehicle. And uh, probably my other one. So I might drag it over to my Scion now and uh, poke at it and uh, see if it can actually find all the uh, ABS SRS modules. Not that I'm expecting any codes, but it would be nice to let's see if it actually works for my two vehicles. But I think this already paid for itself. Saves me having to go to a mechanic or a, a dealership in order to try and get those things fixed if I can fix them myself. Excellent. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, so here I am in my Scion XP, uh, 2008 with uh, 116,000 miles on it. Um, still doing pretty good for me. So let's uh, do the similar kind of thing since we're here. Let's do a uh, scan Asian uh, Lexus Scion. Even though it's nothing more than really a 
differently badged Toyota. So this is kind of neat because it actually uh, identified exactly what my vehicle is. It's a, a US XB 2008 with the 2AZ FE engine. So very cool. So I'm going to hand OK. Um, let's, let's just do, I guess, the engine and emissions control. Uh, whoops. Hit that button. It seems to be a lot faster dealing with this system than the Honda system. I don't know if it's software on the the uh, on the L629 or if it's um, something to do with Toyota and their ECUs. So uh, no code. Okay. Um, did I just do that again? I don't remember what I just did. Yeah, yeah, I just did that again. All right. So no engine codes. Let's do ABS. Really? Since this is much faster. Oh. Okay. Uh, right wheel speed sensor signal malfunction. Left rear wheel speed sensor malfunction. And a foreign object is attached to the tip of right rear speed sensor. Uh, okay. I wasn't expecting those. I don't think I've had a an ABS, or I'm sorry, this is a, yeah, ABS light. I haven't had an ABS light in a long time. I did have one many moons ago, and it was a a wiring harness issue, which was covered under, um, that was covered under uh, warranty, so I wonder if they never cleared the codes, but it's shown them as current, which it never actually trips the light, so I know the light works. I'm going to save these for later then. Um, maybe I'll erase them later and see if they come back. Because then I'll know it's actually occurring. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're going to check SRS here too. We'll see what fun we have in here. <laughs> uh, maybe this... Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Occupant classification system malfunction. Uh, in the history. Uh, okay, so I guess that means maybe... I had something heavy in the passenger seat at one time, maybe. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's in the history, so I guess that means it's probably an old one, so it probably is okay to erase, but I might just do that later, uh, <laughs> like with the other ones, and just see if it bothers to come back. Oh, it's always interesting what you do when you go reading through the old history of your error codes. So, um, uh, again, this is the Autel AL629. It's working great for both of my vehicles, so it's a definite keeper. I'm going to put it in the garage, and uh, uh, hopefully I'll probably get to my uh, my in-laws' vehicles. Um, they have a Subaru and a Toyota Tacoma, and uh, maybe my uh, parents' vehicles as well. They have a, a Chrysler, a, I'm sorry, a Dodge Caravan. Uh, right before they got rid of the Dodge Caravans, but uh, hmm, maybe I'll have to poke at it and see if it works for those vehicles too. But I mean, this so far has been a fantastic tool. Uh, if obviously, like we came across, the updates are a little bit convoluted and going through the whole registration process, but it's um, still being actively updated. So, a lot of the updates included things like uh, model year. Uh, 2017 vehicles so they're still trying to update it so it might not handle the new model a year 18s but um those should all be under warranty anyways so it's uh for the home player market this should work well excellent thanks youtube